All right, here we go. This is the first um, remote annual report I have done. This is a, a whole new way of being around it. So again, continually, if you're still trying to vote and you're unable to, um, please do let Gene or Kelly know. They will be working with folks as we go through these, these reports to get ballots con collected. For my report. This has been a year of tremendous change in congregational patterns. Um, as far as staff transitions, Kelly Ross has joined the staff of the Unitarian Church of Lincoln as our member and admin coordinator. Reverend Kimberly Debus joined us as our affiliated community minister. And Kimberly is somewhere in this call, but uh, I, I can't bring her up and share my screen at the same time. So, hello, Kimberly. Uh, if you saw the service last Sunday she preached, she was also present on Thursday night, and she has joined us here um, on our um, congregational meeting. We had a successful pledge drive this fall that helped us to support some expanded capacity uh, in our budget. And we transitioned to two Sunday morning services on January 12th. We also closed the church building in response to the COVID-19 pandemic on March 15th. And so what I'd like to, take, to do this morning is take about 10 minutes and go into those things, and then take a couple questions uh, from the congregation. So here's what a normal annual report looks like. Our congregational year from last June and July through March was a relatively normal, if very successful year in the Unitarian Church of Lincoln. We had a pledge drive that resulted in, in significant, significantly increased capacity, which allowed us to increase our healthcare benefits for part-time staff. We expanded access to childcare during committee meetings and governance meetings and we covered costs associated with our expanded worship schedule. We also, in January, um, implemented what, what was a nine-month planning process to add a second service on Sunday morning. So on, beginning on January 12th, we held a 9 a.m. contemplative service and an 11 o'clock soulful Sunday with regular huddle meetings among those leading worship um, before each of those, those times. We saw over the months of January and February about a 30% increase in our Sunday morning attendance. If you remember from those conversations as we were planning the second service, a lot of the reason that we had a drive behind that was because it, when you looked at our numbers, we were, we were capped at the amount of physical space that we had in our sanctuary on Sunday morning. And so when we expanded the number of worship opportunities that we had, we saw folks coming to fill those opportunities. Also, um, this fall, um, we disclosed the results of the Ministerial Fellowship Committee's investigation into Reverend Osterman's conduct in Lincoln and elsewhere. Uh, as well as the results of that, that Justin Osterman resigned his fellowship in the UUMA. We also continued our third Thursday services, uh, including notably uh, an outdoor tent revival service in October that about 80 or 90 people attended. And then early March happened. And because I think it's, it, it's a good thing to go over the timeline, this is what March looked like from the church leadership perspective. On March 1st, we started to realize that we might have a thing going on. Sunday, March 1st was the first time that I can find in my notes that we mentioned uh, COVID-19 in worship service. We talked about possible mitigation strategies. We sang, come, come, whoever you are, because that's about as long as you should be washing your hands every time we wash our hands. So that was March 1st. On March 7th, I wrote a report to the board outlining our strategy to reduce physical contact and build out live streaming capacity. 
on March 10th, we had our board meeting. And leading up into that board meeting, just between the 7th and the 10th, several Unitarian Universalist congregations in hard hit areas had already moved to online worship. And University of Nebraska had asked its faculty members to prepare plans for a potential suspension of in-person classes. And then on March 12th, I met with the leadership team and we decided that we would move forward with closing our building effective on March 15th. So March 14th was the last in-person service that we had at the Unitarian Church of Lincoln. And the reason I'm going through that in so much detail is because it, it felt like the whole world was changing, but it happened in two weeks. So in some ways, the story of our congregational year since then has been reacting to this two week long um, period of time. Since March 15th, since we've gone remote, here's what we've put into place. The church program, the core program of the church, begins with daily e-blasts, Monday through Saturday. You get an email from the church. Monday through Friday, those also include a video that I put together, usually two to four minutes long. On Monday, we have a gathering for high school and middle school religious education students on Zoom. On Tuesday, there's an interview series between me and colleagues around the country and around different denominations that goes up on YouTube. On Wednesday, we host open office hours. Thursday, we have a Vespers service in the evening. That's a worship service that happens on Zoom and really focuses on congregational connection. And then Sunday morning. Sunday morning starts at nine o'clock with a coffee hour on Zoom. Then we have worship on YouTube at 10. And then at 11, we have religious education programming also happening on Zoom. So that's our core sort of week that goes by each week that we're in this time period. And that is a picture of what our YouTube page looks like now. YouTube has become sort of the, the front door of our congregation in a lot of ways. It's the place people come to visit us uh, first if they're not on our website. And you can see we've actually produced a remarkable amount and diversity of contact in, in a very short amount of time. Those were the staff driven programs. We've also got a bunch of other stuff going on. I've trans transitioned everyone from working at the building to working from home. We've instituted text-based giving in the congregation. The worship associates have started up a program called UU Connect, which is meeting weekly. Starting Point is a new um, program for interested friends thinking about becoming members. We've started recording music, both uh, in the hymns that we do, but also the choir, doing virtual choir pieces. You saw that this morning. Our pastoral care team has uh, reinvented themselves and is right now calling everybody in the congregation this month. And the congregation applied for uh, participation in the payroll protection program, uh, which we received and we will put in an application for uh, that loans forgiveness in the next couple weeks here. All of this stuff is laid out in considerably more detail um, in my written report, and I would urge you to, to read that if you haven't already. It's on unitarianlincoln.org slash governance. The other thing is personally, um, I did two things this spring. The first is that I began a doctor of ministry program at Wesley Theological Seminary in Church Leadership Excellence. Uh, Wesley is where I have my master's degree, and, and usually you do a doctorate about three years after your master's degree in, in my field. Um, it's a primarily online program, so for the next three years or so, uh, I'll travel to Washington, D.C. about twice a year uh, to do intensive classes for short periods, and then spend a lot of time writing in Lincoln in between. 
I've also uh, been nominated for election as the president of the Faith Coalition of Lancaster County. Uh, that meeting will happen in June. So officially there's nothing to, to announce there yet, um, but uh, it's, it's exciting. So I also just wanna take a moment to, to say a really, uh, Zoom is hard, we're pixels. Um, hang on. Feels weird saying that with just a, uh, a PowerPoint screen. I, I want to take a moment and really say a, a heartfelt thanks to the folks that have been in leadership in this church. Um, our outgoing board members, Emily Cameron Chatil, Kay Hoff, um, Michael Ryan Miller, um, Denise DeBose, Michael Crum, all of whom have stepped off the board over, as, over the year uh, or now. Um, have done an incredible job. Few board members sign up to be on the board during a pandemic. And what may not be obvious from the rest of the congregation is, is how much leadership of this congregation is doing these days. The board's meeting every couple of weeks. The executive team is meeting more frequently than that. We've had to handle more moving pieces than, than any of us expected to in our, in our roles. And so to the continuing members of the board and the folks that just signed on who have been voted on now, welcome. And thank you so much for being willing to, to serve in this capacity. I also wanna say thank you to the, the staff of this church. Jean Helms is our administrative director. Chelsea Krafka is our religious growth and learning director. Bob Fusen is our music director. Kelly Ross, our member and admin coordinator. We've been meeting twice a week on Zoom since March 15th. We have all had to do things well outside our job descriptions and figure out what we're going to be in this new kind of church. Um, and I say this at every congregational meeting, but it is, it is truer now than it has ever been. It is truly an honor and a pleasure to serve with the folks at this congregation. And then the last thank you is just to, to you as the gathered congregational community. Um, you know, I, I, uh, March 15th was really hard. Um, it's, you don't ever become a minister in order to shut down a church building. Like that's just antithetical to who we are. Um, and so I was a bit of a wreck that first week. And then that Thursday night, we launched a Zoom meeting uh, for what was then a third Thursday worship service. And I saw 60 faces looking out. Um, it is one of the most remarkable things of ministry that has, that I have ever been a part of is to see all of you in your houses apart, but still together as a community. So here's where I want to end my report. There were two distinct parts of this year. There was the time before COVID-19 and there was the time after COVID-19. And there's a lot of uncertainty right now. Currently, our building is closed through August, but recent UUA guidance suggests that we may be, we may need to stay closed longer than that. So we may be primarily online for longer than that. So it is a time of uncertainty. And in this time of uncertainty, some things remain true. The Unitarian Church of Lincoln is not fundamentally different because we're online. Our tools are different, but who we are stays the same. Our core faith commitments stay the same. What this community feels like stays the same. So we're coming into our 150th anniversary as a congregation. And what I'm pretty comfortable in saying is that we will be here for another 150 years. And that is where we're at. So at this point, I'm gonna take some questions. I'm gonna go back through the chat and see if I can hit the questions that were asked while I was talking um, that have not already been addressed. So I saw one question about Kimberly's role. Jean answered that. 
Kimberly is our affiliate minister. So she remains in New York. Um, she's not, she, she is institutionally attached to us and volunteers with us, um, but is not moving to Lincoln uh, and is, is not a paid staff member. Um, was there any reaction from around the UUA to the tent revival? Um, officially, no. Uh, unofficially, I had a lot of colleagues say, well, that sounds pretty cool. I wonder if we could do that. Do you know how many non-members have joined us on YouTube services? YouTube is unable to track that because people don't sign in as, as members when they come to YouTube. We get just a, a numbers of who saw the video and when. Um, I can tell you anecdotally, we've gotten, I just got a text today from somebody in the community that, uh, that is not a member but found their way to our broadcast this morning. Leslie asks, can we go back to church on August 15th, even without UUA support? This is a really complicated question. Um, this is a really complicated question. So what the UUA has said is that they recommend we start planning for a more extended closure. That's not the same thing as saying we have to be closed longer. Um, Indeed, they can't say that. We are an independent entity that associates with the UUA. What it means, though, is that we have strong advice that we're going to take into consideration as we plan for what our next year looks like. And that's a thing that, that uh, one of the readings we did on, on Thursday night, or maybe it was today, yeah, um, said, I know the questions much more than I know the answers. Um, the question of when and how we will reopen is one where I know the questions much better than I know the answers. And I think that's the case of, of just about everybody in leadership. That's also our next task. Our task for this month was to, to do this congregational meeting well, and our task starting next month will be more medium term planning. Charlie asks if we are still planning on hosting an intern minister in 2021. Um, that depends a whole lot on what the budget does is the, is the best way to answer that. So that's, that is another question that we may not know the answer to for a little while. Any other questions? Okay.